Hi guys, welcome back again. Today I'm going to be covering another important medical topic regarding respiratory system called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, okay? So COPD is a preventable and treatable disease characterized by what? By persistent airflow limitation, okay? And that's usually progressive and associated with what? An enhanced chronic inflammatory response in the airway, okay? And the lung, uh, to what? To noxious particles or gases. So COPD include both emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So regarding emphysema and chronic bronchitis, first of all, let's focus on the emphysema. Emphysema, so what's emphysema? Emphysema is abnormal permanent enlargement of the airspace, okay? Distal to the what? To the terminal bronchioles accompanied by what destruction of their walls okay and without obvious fibrosis this is emphysema so in the other hand we have what chronic bronchitis chronic bronchitis is cough and sputum for at least three consecutive months in each of what two consecutive years commonly associated comorbid conditions include cvs okay osteoporosis lung disease okay this is regarding what chronic bronchitis so the prevalence of COPD is directly related to the what to the prevalence of the factors in the community and to what the second one to the age of the population so now let's jump to the what pathophysiology of COPD in the pathophysiology of COPD has both pulmonary and systemic uh, components okay the presence of air flow limitation combined with premature airway closure leads to what gas trapping and hyperinflation adversely affecting what pulmonary and chest wall compliance okay pulmonary hyperinflation also results which flattens the diaphragmatic muscle okay and leads to what an increasingly horizontal alignment of intercostal muscle placing the respiratory muscles at mechanical disadvantage okay and the work of breathing is markedly increased first in what in exercise when the time for expiration is further shortened but then as the disease advances at rest also emphysema can be classified by pattern of the enlarged airspace into central sinus, panacea and paracetal or paracetal central sinus which is the commonest one, it's a benign also, but has what good prognosis. Central sinus, if you got emphysema inside the lobe, destruction inside the lobe, okay? Pan asinus, it's also rare, but has what bad prognosis, okay? Pan asinus, if you got emphysema all over the lobe, okay? Uh, paraceptal or parasagital is also another one uh, when you got emphysema uh, around the rim of the lobe. Uh, usually uh, with this type uh, paraceptal co uh, you get what you get pneumothorax and regarding uh, COPD cases 80 to 90 percent of this disease are mixed in the same patient I mean emphysema and chronic bronchitis even 5 to 10 percent of patient get what get emphysema or chronic bronchitis usually emphysematas are thin okay thin and sitting just like this Okay, sitting there just like this, lifting his shoulder up, and they just do what? Okay, what they call this breathing called pink breathing. So this is regarding emphysema. Okay, while chronic bronchitis, while those are thick, okay, thick body and blue blurer, okay, so they get weight. I mean obese, obese patient, okay and cyanosis they are sitting just uh, they are nearly dull i'm like this okay they are nearly dull okay so chronic bronchitis usually get cyanosis and emphysema not get cyanosis okay and now let's jump to the what to the clinical features of copd clinical feature of the copd the first one we have age age above 40 years who present with what with symptoms of chronic bronchitis and or sov the second one we have what cough and associated sputum 
often referred to as a what smoker's cough, I mean, and usually the first symptom. The third one we have what hemoptysis may complicate exacerbation of COPD, okay, but shouldn't be attributed to the what to the COPD without through uh, investigation, okay. SOV, shortness of breath, morning headache may suggest hypercapnia, okay, and edema may be seen and first time during what during an exacerbation okay uh, another one we have breath sound okay breath sound are typically quite crackless okay may accompany effect but if persistent and rise the possibility of what of bronchiectasis okay finger clubbing isn't a feature of COPD okay I should try your further investigation for what lung cancer fibers and others okay Core pulmonary also, right side heart failure, develop in patients with advanced COPD, okay? Particular uh, coexisting sleep apnea or thoracobolic disease, okay? COPD patients often what have pitting edema, pitting edema from salt and water retention caused by renal hypoxia or, and uh, hypercapnia, okay? Fatigue, anorexia, and weight loss may point to development of what of lung cancer or TB okay as I said fatigue anorexia and weight loss are point to what to development of lung cancer or TB but are common in patient with what severe COPD okay and BMI is uh, of uh, prognostic significance okay depression and anxiety are also common and contribute to morbidity okay as i said two classical phenotype pink puffer and blue blurrer pink puffer are typically thin and breathless and maintain normal pacO2 until the late stage of the disease while blue blurrer develop or tolerate what hypercapnia earlier and may develop what edema and secondary polycythemia Okay, and now let's jump to the investigations of the COPD patient. The first one we have spirometry. Spirometry it is established when the post bronchodilator uh, forced expiratory volume, I mean FEV1, at the first one second to what? To FVC, forced volume capacity, means FEV1 to what FVC is below 70%. Okay, the severity of COPD may be defined in relation to the what to the post bronchodilator post expiratory volume to the one first one second okay this is the first one the second one we have what measurement of lung volume to assessment of what of hyperinflation hyperinflation which is performed by helium dilution okay exercise is also to assess what of uh, exercise tolerance and provide baseline of the response to the bronchodilator therapy and or pulse oximetry also okay and the fifth one regarding investigation to a patient with COPD is what chest x-ray okay chest x-ray in the chest x-ray case of emphysema uh, if you got what got uh, in the x-ray I mean if you got low flat uh, diaphragm slim heart and ribs uh, ribs uh, according to the ribs uh, should the five anterior ribs are up here okay normal and uh, the fifth one is located in the diaphragm i mean touching the diaphragm okay but here in the case of emphysema more than five ribs is, is, uh, is uh, present okay i mean six seven eight okay okay therefore diaphragm is low this area is what uh, called uh, hyperinflated okay push down diaphragm and the posteriorly being the 10 ribs is normal or be below 10 is normal anything more than 10 ribs appear uh, is uh, abnormal and called emphysema okay. these are all regarding what regarding investigation of a case COPD histologically emphysema is pathological term refers to destruction of alveolar wall while bronchitis or chronic bronchitis is a symptomatic term is a production of cough with sputum three months per year or two months over two to three years